Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we are back in the chicken coop gardens. Uh, this time it is just Brenna, myself, and the girls, of course, here for a little encouragement. I am going to go ahead and start planting um, some of the plants here in the woodland garden that we are creating beside of the chicken coop. Yesterday, of course, we were here and we planted the island bed behind the chicken coop, right? So we got in the uh, camellias and the Japanese maples and some hydrangeas and abelias and everything. So just to give you an idea of where we are right now, this is, of course, the side of the chicken coop where um, the girls spend the night. And then over here, this is the area behind the blue chairs and within the trees that I want to create a woodland garden. This has never been a quote garden before. It has always been pure straight woods. And so I am going to have a little bit of challenges coming in here as far as some roots. And then there's tons of still um, limbs and that kind of thing that are in here. But I am so stinking excited to develop this garden because it's just gonna be so much fun. If you followed us for any length of time, you know that here at our house, I am predominantly full sun. We built our house in the middle of a field. The only shade that I get is I have two shade beds here at the house, and that is because of the shade that the house gives it. And everything else is just full blazing hot sun. Huge fan of my mama's garden because she is predominantly a shade garden. And I guess we always, I guess it's human nature, right? You always kind of want what you don't have. The grass is always greener on the other side, but I really do enjoy a good shade garden. So uh, to me, they're just very peaceful and they can just be very natural and just a lot of fun. I adore a good shade garden. That is why I'm so excited to be uh, beginning this shade garden. This garden, is going to be developed and worked over the next coming weeks, months, and yes, even years. Gardening is never a uh, final destination. We're always continuing in here, and that is what is so fun about this spot. So let me give you kind of a preference so that you really get a feel for what this space is, how the sun is, and my growing conditions. That will help you understand why I'm choosing the plants that I am and where why I am placing them in the places that I am, because I think it's very important that as um, gardeners, we become a student of our own garden. And my, my prayer is that I can teach you, um, especially if you're a new gardener, how you can really study and understand your garden so that you set yourself up for success from the beginning. Um, not to say that you're not gonna have some setbacks and failures because we all do. We all kill plants, it's a part of gardening. Uh, you just learn and change and pivot and move on from there. All right, big picture here. Of course, we are at the chicken coop. This was just built in this June, and it the, the coop itself is full, full sun. Basically, east is right here, so the sun generally, depends on what time of year it is, will come up over here. So in front of the coop, this is all full sun. Everything in front of the coop, around the coop, is definitely full sun. The area that we are gonna be looking at today, this area, all up in here and obviously it is winter time so i have no leaves on my hardwoods um, there are some pines in there but even in the summertime when this space all the trees are leafed out especially here in the front this gets really nice morning sun i would say four to five hours on the front it gets four to five hours of direct sun however as the day progresses the sun as I'm pivoting here through the trees, um, will eventually it will set right here. So therefore, this whole area does get in the shade. Um, it depends on exactly where you are, um, but it can, the further back you go, the more shade obviously it is in. It will get some filtered sun in the very, very back, and then it is complete shade in the afternoon um, after lunch and therefore reason I'm telling you this is I'm trying to help you understand why I have chosen the plants. And let's just go ahead and talk about the plants. So my plants that need the more shade I have put in the very back. The ones that can handle more sun I have put in the front. Let's look at these. So what you're probably going to see notice right away are the three really nice pretty chartreuse evergreen shrubs. This is a Florida Sunshine Elysium. 
a type of anise. This actual cultivar was discovered um, and, and put out onto the market from Plant Delights Nursery here in North Carolina. Tony Advent is just a very well-known, well-respected um, breeder, plant discoverer, and this is one of his discoveries. It is a fantastic evergreen shrub for the winter. Now, right now, it's as bad as green as it's going to get. Uh, throughout the summertime, the spring, summer, and fall, it is a very, very bright yellow chartreuse color. They're gonna do great right here. How do I know they're gonna do great right here? Well, I learned a little trick from my friend Tina. Remember we went to go visit Tina back in the summer and um, a trick that she had is, or does, is that when she's trying to figure out if a plant is going to like the space where she wants to put it, so she has a plant, she thinks, oh, I'm gonna put it in plant, you know, space A. So she'll actually leave it in its container and leave it there for a couple of weeks or, or however long it is that she wants to leave it there. Obviously she's gonna water it and take care of it that way. But she'll know the sun conditions or the sun conditions right here on how the plant reacts. That is what I did with these Florida sunshines. They've actually been sitting in these woods since this summer. And I would have to come out here of course and water them every day in the summertime because they're just in a three gallon pot but they did not burn. That was my concern is were they gonna get too much morning sun and their leaves burn because this is a shade shrub. Filtered sun, but definitely on the shade side. If it gets too much sun, it will burn. I did not have any burn on these Florida sunshines. So I know this is a great spot for them to be as far as the sun conditions. So very excited about that. Another plant that I did a little test on was the spider's web fatsia. Fatsia is going to be another great evergreen shrub, and this is called uh, spider's web. You really can't tell it right now because it's in the the colors will change. The spider's web has a it will have a lot of white with some um, webbing in there. So the, yes, this one this, this is was a, a newer leaf on it. They did get a little bit of burn on some of the nights, um, but this is gonna be a really fun evergreen, different color, different texture than my Florida sunshines. Both the Florida sunshines and the spider's web are gonna be in that four to five foot tall and basically like a three foot wide. So this is gonna be a really pretty backdrop to um, evergreen backdrop to this bed. Now in the future, I am envisioning adding um, probably some rhododendron. I'm going to probably add some of the old-timey uh, classic azaleas that bloom uh, you know, once a year in the spring because I've got pockets in the back where I can add those nice larger evergreen shrubs that are going to give me uh, flowers through, you know, Maybe it's just once a season and that's okay. And then they give me gorgeous foliage and, and backdrop as the season goes on. So those are my evergreen plants that are gonna go in there. You'll notice that I have Miss Figgy when we were doing the uh, island bed, I had to move her over. For now, she's gonna hang out right here. We'll see if she gets enough sun here, but she'll be good there. And then you remember last year where we were testing out the, um, the inserts from Proven Winners as far as like the Aquapot inserts where you can take the insert and put it in one of your pots, that is this container. So far it's doing great. It has a shade container, it's got an autumn fern in there, it has a euchara, and then there is a hosta and another fern. Obviously they are dormant. So for right now, it is going to hang out by the base of that pine tree. Now, of course, no garden here at Creekside Nursery or just about any garden in my opinion is complete without some hydrangeas. Huge fan of hydrangeas. However, in my full sun garden, I basically can only plant panicle hydrangeas. Panicles, and then if I have the right conditions, I can do smooth hydrangeas. Those are sun loving hydrangeas that bloom on new growth. I've always struggled really hard with my um, my mountain hydrangeas, the uh, serratas, the macrophylla hydrangeas, those hydrangeas that bloom on old growth and tend to be more shade loving here in North Carolina as zone 8A. 
enter into this beautiful woodland garden, it is perfect. They're going to get enough morning sun so that they bloom, but then they're going to get a break in the afternoon from that hot sun. And then what's even important for me is that they are going to be protected by these beautiful trees. So when we have that unexpected late frost, well, it's not unexpected, you just can't predict it. The unpredictable late frost, um, these will be protected because they're underneath trees and if a crazy wind comes in this is north so typically the wind will come this way and all these trees will provide a nice break for it so what are we doing now these are just sticks right now of course but we have tough stuff right here tough stuff is a gorgeous lace cap hydrangea that is going to be a beautiful it's going to be all of these are going to be dependent on my soil so this is going to be more in the blues and the purples all of them probably will be for me because i tend to be more acidic so we have tough stuff. Then we come over here to this beautiful, this is new. This is part of the Lance, Let's Dance series. This is Let's Dance Sky View. It is a re-blooming big leaf hydrangea. So that gorgeous traditional bloom on a hydrangea. We got these in last year from a nursery. Super impressed with this plant. My gosh, it was gorgeous. Along with that series, we have the Let's Dance Big Band. This is brand new. Both of these are going to be nice and petite. I want to say in that two and a half by two and a half size. So that's why I put them towards the front. So we've got um, the two Let's Dances here that will be in that traditional um, classic hydrangea bloom. Again, in those blues and purple ranges because we are acidic. And then the last one that we're going to do today is the Tough Stuff Top Fun. This is another new one, still in that uh, Tough Stuff family. It too will be a lace cap. Really, really excited about all of these. I know they're going to do great, super fun. And then last but not least, because I am a Southerner, I have to put at least another camellia in here. Here we have, this is Moon Shadow. Moon Shadow is going to be a beautiful, like white with pale pink. I actually, what I want to do, I'm not going to do it today just because of time, because my, I'm racing against the rain. I want to come in here and add a couple of more in here because I want to have a big, huge pop. So I'll have moon shadow right here that we'll be able to see. That is the little window right there. That is where our kitchen sink is. <laughs> I spend a lot of time at the kitchen sink. So I will be able to see these camellias and this garden through the woods. Super, super excited. Now, what I'm going to do is because uh, Jenny is flying solo today, I am going to use my power planter auger with the um, heavy duty tip for the three gallon shrubs. I've got it back here in uh, the back of Johnny. So this is, of course, you've been with us before. This is how Jenny plants when I'm by myself or don't have, can't get the big machinery in. So nice big, this is the nine inch, and what makes it the heavy duty is this tip right here. This will go into my clay soil, great, does a pilot hole, and then allows the big part of the auger to get in there. So we're gonna do this, perfect for a three gallon shrub. Then of course, always has the Biotone starter fertilizer. Everybody's gonna get Biotone, and then everybody is going to get some land and sea as well. This flower bed is not going to be on irrigation. There is nothing up here uh, within the chicken coop immediate gardens that is on automatic irrigation. I have my hose link behind me so I can water everybody as they need it. Therefore, I am going to plant these shrubs more even with the soil. I'm not gonna plant them high, which is what we traditionally do in our clay soil, but because this is no irrigation they're going to be competing with a ton of tree roots and they're going to be a little bit more on the dry side. I'm going to plant them more even and not up high. I'll show you everything when I'm done. So I'm going to set the camera up and get all of these planted. Probably going to drill all the holes and then just kind of do like that. Drill the holes, biotone, compost, plant and move it on through that way. So here we go. Let's get them in the ground.
All right, my friends, I have got all of the plants are in the ground. They are nice and snug in their new home. They are labeled, they are good to go. And now I just sit back and watch and let them do all of their fun stuff underground right now. So let's just kind of recap, show you everything. Um, but let's address this. We talked about this yesterday when we were in the island bed. Yes, it is the basically the end of January and I am adding shrubs to my garden. Is this a smart thing? Um, this depends on where you are. Being a student of your own garden, I am North Carolina. I am a zone 8A. My ground truly never freezes. It uh, does not, it, yes, it gets cold. We've gotten down to 12 and 13 degrees multiple nights in the teens, but they are spread out. I do not have consecutive um, weeks upon weeks of extremely low temperatures. I do not have, I don't have a big snow load uh, here in North Carolina. And so I am able to plant. My plants are more insulated in the ground than they are in their nursery cans hanging out. Yesterday morning was that like 16 degrees and some of the shrubs that we added to the bed, the what I call the island bed up here, they were actually frozen in their cans. Um, they were out exposed on the shrub lot. They froze. It's not going to kill the plant because, you know, today is, is considerably warmer than it was yesterday. By the end of the week, we're going to be in the 70s. That's North Carolina. Plants are much more insulated, happier in the ground. They get more nutrition. They have that available soil. They can get all of their beautiful root growth done during this time, get really, really well established, which is key for this area because they're going to be competing against tree roots and it's not on irrigation. So definitely my first year, I am going to have to be very vigilant about making sure that they're getting the water that they need. With that being said, I am not watering these babies today. Why not? Well, North Carolina winters are historically very wet. We are getting ready to go in. It actually was sprinkling a little bit ago, but starting this afternoon tonight, we're going to get like five days of rain. I don't need to water these things, y'all, and my soil is already nice and damp. Uh, yeah, so everybody's in the ground. Like I said, Britta was an amazing help. Hopefully the camera showed that because using that power planter auger some of the holes i mean they drilled beautifully there were absolutely zero roots in the way and i just got beautiful nice happy happy soil i think like these first couple of right in here were just great i want to say it was this uh the let's dance sky view hydrangea there were massive roots in the way i was able to kind of snip it with my felcos and then my trusty assistant was able to rip out uh, that big root for me that is the thing when we talk about using these power planter augers I hear people say um, frequently, they're asking the question, can that auger handle thick red clay? Yes, get the one with the heavy duty tip. Uh, it handles it great. That's all that I have is heavy duty, heavy duty red clay around here. So I have the heavy duty tip. Uh, can, it, can it you know, go against rocks? Yes, it can. You just have to be careful. That's why we use the DeWalt drill. We just get it from Power Planner. It has the E-clutch in there. So if you hit a rock or a root, it will automatically cut off. So it, yes, it'll still have a little bit of a kickback and it'll catch for a second, but it cuts off. Don't ever use a power planter auger with a drill that plugs in, like an electric drill. You will break your hand. <laughs> you will break something when you hit a massive root or a rock. Do not do that. Um, can, it, can the power planter handle being planting under trees? Well, I think I just demonstrated that. That's what I did. Um, you know, here I am, you know, a 46 year old woman, 5'2", and I can handle it and it is not a problem. And I just got all of these plants planted in a very relative short amount of time as compared to using a shovel. Uh, work smarter, not harder. That is what we believe. So between the power planter and then my trusty root puller here, man, uh, <laughs> it worked out great. I was really happy because if you've watched our uh, Gardening with Creekside for any length of time, you know we have Brenna who is, she's a little over two years old, German Shepherd, and the girl loves some sticks. She carries sticks around all the time and chews on them. Also, she is a German Shepherd. She has those strong German Shepherd bloodlines. Uh, if she has something in her mouth and she doesn't want you to have it, you're not gonna pull it away from her. This girl has got a bite and a grip and a determination to hold onto that, like something you would not believe. So she handled those roots quite well for me. So it worked out quite nicely. 
everybody got, like I said, pretty much right there at ground level. I did not want to raise them up very much because I want them to have as much water as they possibly can. Now, right now, my hydrangeas really kind of disappear. Everybody got a half a bag of land and sea around them. And then I came back and went ahead and labeled them. I love these little uh, copper plant tags. We actually have them available on the website now um, and you can write on them. So on the front, I will put the name. So like this is the Let's Dance Big Band. And then I don't just put hydrangea, I put what kind. So this is a macrophylla hydrangea. And then on the very back, on the flip side, I put the month and the year that I planted it. So it just says 124, right? Um, so they are in here. Everybody has one because they are copper they will age and so they won't be quite as shiny as time goes on but yeah so that way i don't have to that's the biggest lie that i tell myself oh i'll remember what that is yeah no no i don't and so um, they're labeled and if i have guests in the gardens then they can see too exactly what the plants are uh let's see other than that we had a great day out here in the garden great morning of course brenna is my faithful companion we've had a lot of fun watching the birds I am a huge birder. I love watching my songbirds. We have feeders all over the property. And I, I guess because it's a, it's a cloudy day, and we're getting ready to get days upon days of rain. Uh, the birds are extremely active this morning. And so we have uh, beautiful songbirds all over the, uh, this area right here. Within the confines of the chicken coop garden, I have uh, four bird feeders. I have both like a tube feeder and then suet feeders and then cakes and I just have everything. I'm a sucker for a good bird feeder and good uh, bird food so that I can bring in all the sweet little birds. So uh, I think you can stay tuned and hopefully we'll have a little bit of footage of some sweet birds here at Creekside. Uh, but yeah, anyway, we have, like I said, we have the plant markers and the actual pen that I use because it is a UV proof and so it does not uh, fade. You can use a Sharpie on those plant tags, but over time that will fade away. So the garden marker that I use is like UV proof and it will not fade. So that's just a little tip for you. I will tag all of that. And so you can, if you're interested in it, you can go to the website and get those. And we have them in stock so we can get them out to you right away. As always, we hope you found this fun, informative, and inspirational. Thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. We so appreciate y'all. Y'all have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.